Hello everyone, welcome to 2024. Apologies if the tone of my voice is a bit quieter today, uh, just because I uh, am still a little bit ill. It is 12am and I'm still a little bit hungover from New Year's Eve. So today we're doing another album ranking, you guys seem to like those. Um, and I haven't done one in a while, so uh, we're ranking every Sodom album, probably one of my favourite bands ever. Despite changing their sound quite a lot, you know, starting with very raw black and thrash, they've done like death thrash stuff, but they stayed pretty consistently great throughout their entire career, uh, with some exceptions here and there. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, let's start off, shall we? So uh, I'm a level with you guys. Masquerade and Blood is a bit shit. It's incredibly bland. It's kind of punk influence, which I usually like in Thrash. I'm a big fan of crossover Thrash, but like, this just isn't really that. Shadow of Damnation is okay, and Scum has some catchy riffs. Uh, but beyond that, this album's just pretty much just nothing. I will say that if I had to pick a least favorite era, I'd definitely say this era, with a kind of th this album and also uh, Get What You Deserve and stuff like that. Alright, up next we have the self-titled album, Sodom. This is a pretty divisive album. I mean, I've seen people say it's amazing, I've seen people say it's awful. Uh, it's... it's not great. It's not very inspired. It is pretty heavy. I do fuck with City of God and Lords of Depravity. Apart from that, there isn't really any other great songs in this album. There's not much to keep coming back. It's uh, kind of just kind of uninspired. So the next album is Get What You Deserve. Um, it's another sort of uh, crossover thrash punk influence sort of album. This one... I used to like a lot more than I do. I used to actually like when I first heard this album. I was I was kind of into it to be honest. It was sort of gave a little gave a little toxic holocaust sort of energy to it, which I liked. But then like coming back to it, I really wasn't impressed. I gotta be honest. I don't think it's as bad as some people make it out to be. It's not awful. It's not even that bad. It's just not great. It doesn't take itself quite as serious as other albums, which I do quite appreciate. Uh, I like the songs Jabba the Hutt and Eat Me, they're kind of fun. I can kind of see why people hate this album, but like, it doesn't bother me that much. Alright, next up is The Epitome of Torture. I like the vocals a lot, I'll say that. They go a lot more brutal with the vocals, I think, which I quite like. It's also still a pretty melodic album, which I quite liked. I like Stigmatized. It just doesn't really stick with you. The riffs are pretty weak, I think. My Final Bullet, the opening track, is uh, it's pretty shit. It's not bad though, I do like some things about it. I'd say it's like pretty much on par with um, Get What You Deserve, um, but I stuck it above because eh, maybe it's a little bit better. I like one or two songs, maybe a bit more. Now we're getting to Decision Day. I was gonna put this last, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. When I first heard this I was like, this is shit, but like, it's actually okay. I like Caligula, I think that's how the song's pronounced. It's probably one of the most generic Sodom albums to come out of the last decade, maybe. Very happy that the album that came after this uh, in 2020 was uh, the most recent album, and uh, that album kicks ass, but we'll talk about that later. Alright, so next up is Better Off Dead. Again, vocals are pretty good. Um, I like songs like The Sora's Law. I'd say from here on in their discography, I would listen to them again quite a lot. It's pretty good, I don't really have loads to say on it. Um, Sodom have definitely done much better in their discography, but I like this one, good job. It's not really got any interesting influences I can talk about. Um, it's just, you know, it's just a good thrash album, what can I say? All right, next is Till Death Do Us Unite. If you ignore the fucking album cover, it's pretty fucking good. <laughs> I really like this one. It had to grow on me a bit, I will admit. Yeah, I didn't love it that much the first time I heard it. Um, but yeah, it's really grown on me. I like the I like the speed metal influence. It's very classic sounding. It's honestly way more stylized and interesting than you'd expect based off the fucking album cover. I don't even know if I need to censor that or what. Alright, so Genesis 19, which was the most recent Sodom album, came out in 2020. And it's really fucking good. It's like really experimental. There's loads of variety in it. Like it's melodic. It's it's brutal at times. There's some really classic thrashy songs, but there's also like blast beats and like death metal and black and thrash influences here and there sprinkled in. Favorite songs are probably Waldo and Pigpen, uh, Glock and Roll, and Friendly Fire. I think it's called. But yeah, it's honestly a pretty interesting album. It opens up with an instrumental of just like a like a doomy thrash riff played for like a minute, but obviously it. it got variety in it. But yeah, honestly, I really like this album. I kind of hope they go in like a similar direction if they do more albums in the future. Next up we've got In War and Pieces. Fucking amazing title track. Really groovy riffs which I like. Through Toxic Veins is really good. Uh, Art of Killing Poetry. I think from here on the albums become like just amazing. I'd say it's definitely the best of the like newer Sodom albums I think. But it's honestly just really, really catchy and really solid. Alright, so next up, people might be surprised at this one solo, Agent Orange. 
And I'd say probably from here on is where the album's are like truly just 10 out of 10s, I think. Wonderful guitar work. Pretty much every single song in here is a banger. The title track's amazing. Magic Dragon, Remember the Fallen, and Baptism of Fire. It is a really, really memorable album, I will give you that. Next up we have one which I honestly was tempted to put at number one. Like, this one is just fantastic. Code Red. The title track is not only probably one of my favourite Sodom songs, probably just one of my favourite thrash songs in general. Spiritual Demise is great, or like Conspiracy is really good. Probably has my favourite album cover, like, of all fucking time. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna cheat a little bit here. We're gonna lump together the first EP in The Sign of Evil with the first album, Obsessed by Cruelty. Or I wouldn't do that because that makes no sense. But Sodom does it. So, I'm gonna go as well. They're very similar sounds, to be fair. Very, like, raw, black, and thrash. And then some of themselves like to uh, lump these two together a lot. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing. But yeah, this album slash collection is fucking fantastic. Also, I think In the Sign of Evil, the EP is, like, quite a lot higher than Obsessed by Cruelty. But even lumping them together, it's still fantastic. I really like how just haunting and atmospheric the whole thing is, and just those like really raw, nasty, first wave black metal vocals. It's very Bathory sounding, I will say. It's got a very low quality production, which really adds to it. That's not an insult in the slightest. It really fits the, the atmospheric feel to it. But yeah, Death Like Silence is probably the classic uh, Sodom song everyone knows. Outbreak of Evil and Blasphemer are pretty iconic as well. All right, so up next we have Persecution Mania, which most people put in number one, but I'm not going to. It's a lot more thrashy than Obsessed by Cruelty, but it's still got that first wave black metal influence. First track, Nuclear Winter, is a fucking masterpiece. Sodomy and Lust as well is a fantastic song. Probably a perfect combination as well when it comes to just, you know, the black and thrash influence and just the purely thrash. But up next, we have the album which I was convinced I was going to put in number one. M16. It's sort of similar to Code Red, but I'd say it's a lot slower paced than that, while still being quite thrashy though. It's easily got some of the best Sodom songs in here. First of all, title track, uh, also Lead Injection and Genocide, and Napalm in the Morning, which is just a fucking masterpiece, uh, which uh, when I was recording my, uh, my top five thrash albums video, I didn't realize until after editing that I accidentally called it Napalm of the Morning, and it was too late to change it, so that pissed me off. But yeah, M16 is basically a perfect album, but there was one which I did put just just slightly above it, although it's a very different album, Tapping the Vein, which is, once again, pretty much perfect. Probably easily their most brutal album, very death metal influence. The title track's fantastic, Hunting Season, uh, Bullet in the Head. I think Body Parts is like easily one of the best Sodom songs again. It's a fucking relentless album that's just exciting all the way through. I definitely used to consider M16 my top album, but just after re-listening to all of them for the video, I was like, I can't, I can't resist not putting Tapping the Vein in one. So anyway, that was my uh, ranking every Sodom album. Do let me know if you want to see more of these, but if you want to see me do different kinds of heavy metal video, then do let me know. I'm interested to see what will go down well with you guys, and uh, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.